as a follow-up to my last video on vocal self-assessment, I tried, I really tried, to record another video, twice, in which I talked a little bit more about each of the aspects or the areas of our technique that we should really focus on when trying to assess our own vocal skills where we're at right now with our technique. And both of those times, the videos were ridiculously long. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down and focus on one aspect of our technique at a time and talk about the specific ways in which we would go about assessing our skills in that area and the things that we need to look out for and listen for. So today we're going to start with vocal range and it's an area of obsession for a lot of singers. We all want to have nice extensive ranges so that we can sing a lot of the songs that we want to sing. So there are two aspects of range that I tend to focus on when I'm working with students. The first is our singable range or our singable compass. Your singable range extends from the lowest notes that you're able to grunt or croak out all the way up to the highest notes that you're able to squeak or squeal out. And so how you're going to find that is you're going to sit down to a piano or a guitar and you're going to start by singing a note within comfortable speech inflection range. That would include the pitch range that we speak in under normal circumstances. So you're going to start by singing that note and then you're going to walk down in pitch, semitone by semitone, so chromatically. That means if you're sitting down at a piano, you're going to start with the note that you're singing and then you're going to hit every single black note and every single white note until you get to the very, very lowest note that you're able to physically produce. And you're going to take note of what that note is and you're going to write it down in your journal. And then you're going to do the same thing in an upward direction. You're going to start with a comfortable note, I would say start with the middle range so that you can save a little bit of time, and you're going to walk up chromatically every black note, every white note, until you get to the very top note that you're able to produce physically, and you're going to write that down. And that would be your singable compass or your singable range. But then there's another aspect of range that's probably even more important, and that is your performable range or your performable compass. And that includes the range of pitches that you would feel comfortable and confident singing in a performance. Now, if you're an aspiring classical singer, you're going to find that your definition of performable compass is going to be a little bit stricter because you are not going to use electronic amplification. So the range that you're going to use in your performance is going to require you to be able to effectively resonate all of those pitches. Whereas if you're singing in contemporary styles, you have a little bit more leniency in terms of how effectively you're able to resonate a note because you're going to have amplification, you're going to be able to use a microphone. And that's a really important consideration because we want to look at that performable range and we want to sort of superimpose it on the ranges of the songs that we're trying to sing. And here's where you ask yourself the really important question. How does my performable range stack up next to the ranges of those singers whom I admire most and whose songs I am hoping to be able to sing or to cover? And if you feel as though your range is very small and is going to prevent you from singing those songs, that becomes an area of focus in your training. And you have to learn to be able to gently, gradually, smartly, is that a word? Smartly? Intelligently? Grow, extend your range over time. Untrained singers will very often have a much smaller range that they would feel comfortable and confident using in a performance situation, and that's often an octave or an octave and a half. Um, and with more training, more development, we can definitely extend that range. We can grow it. We can develop more consistency with those notes and more comfort and ease. A lot of songs, commercial songs, pop music, they only cover about an octave and a half of range. So you don't need an extensive range necessarily to be able to sing the kinds of songs that you want to sing, unless you want to sing them in the original keys, which is another story altogether. And then you have to ask yourself the question, what is limiting me right now? What is preventing me from being able to have that upper range extension or that lower range extension? What is standing in my way? And this is again where a singing teacher is really going to be most beneficial. Um, it's going to really help diagnose what's at the heart of your limited vocal range. And in a lot of cases it has to do with vocal registration. 
uh, where the voice kind of changes gears from one vocal register to another, from the lower register to the upper register. And in that little transition point, there are a lot of fine adjustments that need to take place, both physiologically and acoustically. And if we haven't learned to be able to make those adjustments effectively, then sometimes what happens is we find ourselves sort of hitting a ceiling in terms of the pitches that we're able to sing. So for example, if you consistently find yourself going flat on a certain pitch within that range where the voice sometimes wants to change gears and you can't seem to get over that hump, then it's possible that it's just a registration issue that's standing in your way of being able to extend your range upwards. If you're dealing with a lot of excess tension, you may also find that that limits your range a little bit. So if you're experiencing tensions, if you're aware of them, if you register those sensations of tension and strain physiologically, then you may also consider that as a possible reason for your limited vocal range. So what your range is today is not necessarily what it's going to be a month from now or a year from now, right? So you want to be patient with yourself and understand that it takes vocal development to grow that range. And again, that's where working with a qualified singing teacher can really help you achieve your goals in terms of extending your vocal range. So I hope you'll stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this series in which I will talk about the other aspects of technique that we need to focus on in our vocal self-assessments and give you some more direction and help you interpret some of the things that you're hearing in your own voice with regards to those specific areas of technique. Thank you so much for watching today and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to this channel and also letting me know what you think of this video by clicking the thumbs up. Thank you. Take care.